Okay, last session. These ladies are dry. They've been talking so yeah. much. It's <laughs> like um, the mummy in the museum. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to get started, um, it, Ellie asked me to ask this question. And what makes you, Ellie, unique? Oh, you're going to start with that? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but my answer is very boring. But it is the most difficult question. Um, she has a very a funny answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you start. Mine is not so funny. Okay, something unique about me. Hmm. Um, uh, when I was a kid, I was doing uh, downhill skiing professionally, and uh, I was doing that for 10 years, and then I had to quit uh, because I had to enter the, the college. And uh, when I got to, um, uh, to NAU, I realized that they have um, a, an alpine ski team that I joined later on. So um, I just can't wait uh, to start skiing again. We don't have snow right now in Arizona, so, <laughs> so, but the the winter season was supposed to start uh, yesterday, but they don't have snow basically. So anyway, unique um, thing about me is that after ten years of not skiing, I uh, raced last year in Durango, Colorado. Oh, that was awesome. And she did very well for that team. <laughs> Um, I think I have two, two things that made me a little bit unique. Um, the first thing is, okay, who here has cataracts? <laughs> or has had? Has had a seat? No, no one else? <laughs> okay, I have cataracts in one eye. That's not so special. Like, it's nothing, it's just, I see blur. But the second thing is, um, I drive people a little bit crazy because, especially the ones that are really close to me, um, because I'm very curious, <laughs> very curious. As I ask why to everything. And when I was a when I was a little girl, I was like, why, why, why? <laughs> My teachers hated me. I was once co I was once compared to the flies that revolved around <laughs> in the ceiling. <laughs> but because I was very, very, very curious and. Um, I like to collect little pieces of knowledge from everything. I know a little bit about physics. I like, I know a lot about now biology because I'm really into it. Um, what I do not know about is chemistry. Maybe when I'm older, I would like to get into that. But I really, I really like to know things. Wow. So that's cool. my new thing. Ellie, I think you should go back to your adjective a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is her co-sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about your favorite national holiday, and tell us uh, why you like it so much. Um, my favorite national holiday, well, here in the U.S. is Thanksgiving, because being with people that you really like and eating, it's like, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> you should have it in every part of the world. Um, no, but real in Chile, it's the national, we have like the national festivities and I really like it because um, they last for like a week. So you basically, people don't work through a week. Um, that's probably because our national productivity is so low. Um, and, then, um, and you know, I like it because maybe it's because I'm young, so you get together, you don't celebrate it with your parents, you celebrate it with your friends, you go to the beach and you, there's a kid here and you do what, there's a kid present. <laughs> Train you and you party and <laughs> 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 use, but you have to be um, you have to be um, you have to be an adult to do that and um, traditional food traditional dances it's very nice. How about you, Lana? Um, well, I think I'm getting older, <laughs> so the, my favorite holiday is New Year. Um, because when I was a kid, I didn't appreciate that very much. Um, just same with family, same with parents, and sometimes relatives came over. But now I really want to spend um, holidays with my with my parents, sitting at this round table as we right now do. Um, are doing 
and um, even Russian, uh, Russian cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> All everything that I miss so much right now in the States. Oh. Um, and uh, my mom is a really nice cook. So basically, and oh, and eating tangerines. It was something. Well, my my family was not really rich, and, and um, we used to buy like a bucket of tangerines, and like maybe a month before. So very close to the new year, in that bucket, I, we didn't have any tangerines left. It's loud. I was eating every day, like one or two. <laughs> so my parents were very angry all the time at me. It was like, stop! You won't have any tangerines on the new year. Um, but now. But anyway, it was, um, it is and was a very um, nice holiday that I really like. So, family reunion. Yes. Awesome. Um, do you have uh, a questions here that you would like to ask? Anyone? Well, since they have such big personalities, I want to hear this one. <laughs> when, you, when you accepted this to come to the United States, what was your perspective or what did you anticipate happening that really didn't, you know, you were surprised about or excited about when you came here to a different culture? Well, it was not my first time in the United States, so I kind of had already perspective on what might happen, but it, again, in academic setting, it was different. Um, so the first one that really surprised me, uh, there's no power relation between you and the professor anymore. For example, in Russia, I mean, you were you're just a student and professor is a god. Here, mm -hmm. we have more yeah. or less, less power relation. I mean, we still have power relation, but it's not that evident. So we still, we, so professors treat you as a colleague, and it's a it's really nice feeling. So another thing is that we have such a multicultural, multinational um, uh, classes. So I have uh, peers from so many countries in the world. So we have, I have peers from Indonesia, uh, China, South Africa, um, Saudi Arabia, so everywhere. And in Russia, we had only <coughs> Russian students and no really perspective, like world perspective. So I can experience like world understanding as we all talking about here. Uh, and uh, another thing I already talked about is elective classes. In Russia, you don't have a chance to pick classes what you want to take. Even, so you have elective classes and you have um, classes that you have to cover anyway. So I fully, um, I'm taking advantage of my elective classes right now. Because <laughs> usually, I mean, my peers have three, four classes, have six, seven classes. So next semester gonna, I might have seven as well. So I just, just take advantage of that. <laughs> uh, those, who, those who say, I don't have time, you have time. It just it depends how much time you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ellie, you're being really serious, and you're not a serious person. <laughs> um, no, okay, I'm tell wondering. Them, and I was talking. Tell them all about your interest in theater, your interest in comedy, and how you've used it. How I used it. Um, what? Um, <laughs> something she's never shared with anybody. She keeps it to herself. Except you and I discussed it. That I studied drama? Yes. Yeah, I was three years of drama. I, uh, my BA, my major is in drama. Um, I really don't like it. And um, <laughs> No, the thing is, um, yeah, I studied drama for three years back in Chile. That was I when I went... I finished high school and I went immediately into drama school, um, very much enjoyed it, but after three years um, I decided to change my route. I went into sociology and education because um, I really didn't like to act in front of people or just devote myself 100% to it and I never acted again, never ever. <laughs> But well, I don't miss it at all. <laughs> I saw you doing a little acting when you were having your picture taken. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part, of my, it's part um, of my natural. How about explaining, um, tell them if you had best day ever, what would it be? What, what would your activities be? You know, best day. Best day for ever. Me it's easy. I probably teach for half of the day and then 
just go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> For the second half of the day. These are serious students, folks. <laughs> she is. Yeah, well, she is, because I, I, what I wrote is, I would have lunch with my family, um, with m all my extended family. Um, we, are, we are lots, and we're really um, close. Um, then I imagine um, in San Francisco, um, it will be a warm day. I would have a picnic at Dolores Park um, with my best friends. No homework at all. Um, <laughs> and probably go out dancing afterwards with my boyfriend and all my friends. That will be my best day right now. I will. Maybe I would teach. <laughs> not, not the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Think of me if you want to ask about my studies, I can tell you a lot of what I do. I study a lot, but yeah. I'm giving this image. Is there <laughs> something that you both of you would like to share that I haven't asked or they haven't asked? <laughs> I know. Um I like there was one question um about what would I tell to the IDK um, mm -hmm. women that weren't here? And I know when I, um, well, I come from Berkeley, so you expect that I cannot be, I cannot um, be quiet about what is happening. And I have two messages. Um, the first one is unity in these hard times. And the second one, and has a lot to do with what I study, I study social emotional learning. And it's to, it's for everyone, really. It's cultivate your compassion. Um, in whatever setting you are, cultivate your compassion. Cultivate your compassion either with your students, with their families, um, with your neighbors, or with someone from another culture, or with someone who really thinks different. Because they probably, in these times, they really need it. So, yeah, and compassion has all this correlates with really uh, good outcome so um, yes that's what I really the question that made me think a lot oh well put thank you Ellie. Um, the thing I really want to um, say is that how my co-sponsors changed my life for the better mm -hmm. at NU and Flagstaff um, so I was I am the I became a family member of Yolanda Gonzalez. And her husband and Yolanda treat me as Russian granddaughter. <laughs> so um, I basically had the first Thanksgiving with them, the first Thanksgiving of my whole life, um, first Christmas. And, um, and they introduced me to uh, several things that I've never tried. Uh, for example, <laughs> for example, blazers. Blizzard. Blizzard from Dairy Queen. And I had one, um, and um, it's a great feeling. I have every, every time I have any questions or concerns, I can call call um, Yolanda. It'll be Alex. How my Russian granddaughter is doing? <laughs> so um, it's it's a great opportunity for me to um, to have grandmother and grandfather here from the United States. So, thank you. Any other questions? When you go back home, what are your plans? Um, so I will go home. Um, I, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna go home straight after the uh, graduation because you gotta go back to Myrtle Beach first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, so we have this bonus from Fulbright program. We can stay for another year. Um, if we find a job, then we can s spend another year here. But when I get to Russia, um, I'd like to do the teacher training and um, well basically share everything I learned right now during my program through workshops, um, different, well, teleconferencing with, so I will try to connect NU and my Russian university um, where I was studying uh, because I know that there is a need uh, in teachers in opportunities um, to, um, to communicate in English because we don't really, we don't have foreigners there. Siberia, come on. Uh, <laughs> so, um, 
So basically, I'll try to make um, to make other teachers aware of everything I learn. So just pretty much sharing experience. That's exactly what Fulbright wants. So everything we get, we just pretty much share in Russia. I mean, in my country. Um, well, I am applying right now to PhD, so I won't be back yet. Um, not uh, not at least for four to five years, maybe six. Um, but when I go back, and I will eventually go back, I, I don't pretend to stay here as a professor. I want to go back. Um, I will probably work, oh, well, with a PhD, um, going back to classroom as with a PhD, it's almost impossible. No, um, no, I, maybe I would very much, and I would enjoy um, doing, having classrooms maybe a couple of hours a week just to stay connected to the reality of classrooms because if not it's just like thinking of things without without the feet um, on, on where it really things are happening um, but I probably if I stay to the PhD I will stay either in academia but really relating well we didn't talk about what we we're studying but relating doing research based practice and um, implementing and measuring programs that are interventions in schools. But we didn't talk about what we were doing, so it's really um, not saying a lot right now. You can ask the persons who were down in the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? We're almost out of time. So we are about one minute. I, I was asked to make sure that everyone knows that when you leave your please go downstairs to the social room where there'll be pictures that are taken. Yes. Program too. I know the answer for Lana, but maybe it would be interesting for the group to hear and, and you could share too. What did you do after college before you came to America? Um, I was teaching English in China for three years and it was the greatest experience I've ever had in teaching. Um, so yeah, I studied in Russia, I graduated, then went to China for three years and then I got uh, accepted to Fulbright program. But anyway, in China, I had the youngest student who was two years old, and the oldest student was who was 65 years old. So I I was teaching really, really mal, uh, like different levels of. Um, I had students of different le um, age groups, but it was it was great. Loved it. Wow. <laughs> um, well, before coming here, I was a public school teacher for two years. I taught um, inner city elementary school. I taught from first to eighth grade. I was also a homeroom teacher for fifth graders that then, and I also went with them for sixth graders, like fifth and sixth. And I taught English. <coughs> I taught English, well, their native language was Spanish and I taught English, ESL. Um, and I loved it. But it was really difficult. Well, inner city, you know. Did Probably they, did they want easy. to learn? <sighs> After. English. Did they want to learn English? You know, they a lot of yeah, they did. Um, mm -hmm. They did. Um, many of the ar the artists that they liked were like um, Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus. It was like, what does his um, lyrics say? Um, so yeah, you could find motivations. Um, you could find motivations, but at times, sometimes they totally said like, why, why, why is when it, why I'm going to use this and it's real mm -hmm. when are they going to use English if they're not even they're not going to go or the statistics say that they're not going to go to university mm -hmm. so it was it was mm -hmm. difficult but yes. I think we made great accomplishments okay. well thank awesome. you so much uh, for your questions and thank you girls for your answers and yeah I, I just want to this is my son Patrick. He goes to a French immersion school and he's in sixth grade and he just started Mandarin this year. So oh. you must talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lana is the only person I know that's fluent in Russian, Chinese, and English and they are not compatible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.